welcome back to my channel it's Belle. Today we have part four in my series of series I want to read with four books or more in the series. I think the series is called A Tale of Fontania. These are by Barbara Eltz and two of them are naked hardbacks and two of them aren't but this is the first book The Traveling Restaurant Jasper's Voyage in th three parts. And this one's a naked hardback. And the Queen and the Nobody Boy. And the ones that aren't Naked Hardbacks, even the Naked Hardbacks looks the same, so. The Volume of Possible Endings. And the Not Impossible. On the mysterious sailing ship, the traveling restaurant, 12-year-old Jasper Ludlow, by all accounts an ordinary boy, embarks on an adventure across old ocean and Lake River Sea. Jasper faces whirlpools, troublesome monkeys, and hungry pirates in the search for his baby sister and his quest to save the kingdom of Fontania from the provisional monarch Lady Gaul. An edge of your seat tale of treachery, courage, and magic. The covers screamed out to me on these, and I'm so intrigued, and they just sound like epic adventures, so very excited. I think this series is called Son of Angels. I'm not sure by Jarrell Law. First book is Spirit Fighter. Fire Prophet. Shadow Chaser. Truth Runner. Jonah Stone has always thought of himself average. But in seventh grade, he learns a fascinating family secret, and his world turns upside down. Jonah's mom is a Nephilim, the daughter of a human and a fallen angel, which makes Jonah one quarter angel. When his mom is kidnapped by fallen angels, it's up to Jonah and his sister Eliza to rescue her. Guided by prayer and a guardian angel, Jonah and Eliza embark on an epic adventure through the streets of New York and come to understand that God plans in ways they never could have imagined. So New York, angels, I mean, he's one quarter angel, like, very intrigued by this. Sounds like it's full of faith and angels and adventure, New York. Very excited. I'm a Christian and I believe in God, so this sounds like a, a Christian-based fantasy fiction. So I'm excited for that. We have the Histories of Earth series by Stephen J. Carroll. And this is book one, In the Window Room. The Prince of Earth. All the Worlds of Men. Worlds Unending. In the Window Room is a story about a young girl, Delany Calbifer, who has caused some trouble one fall while she attended the Maple School for Girls. And she, as punishment then, is made to leave the dormitory and is forced to stay by herself in an old abandoned home on the outskirts of the school grounds. This old house, the Grayford House as it is called, was a sort of place with covered furniture and rooms leading to other unexpected rooms and she would be completely and purposely alone, or so she thought. Though, as she quickly came to find, there was more to his, this house than met the eye. There were secret passages and hidden treasures, lost and forgotten with the passing time, and a room, a fantastic and otherworldly sort of room, which she had decided to call the window room. This is a story about the dangerous and mysterious adventures she found there. Very intrigued by that. And they sound incredible. And then out of this series, it's the Mapmaker Chronicles by A.L. Tate. And then I think this is supposed to be like a companion or spinoff, and it's and it's the Ataban Cipher. Duology, I guess it's just going to be. But from what I understand, they're spinoffs. So I'll only read the synopsis of the first one. But the first book is Race to the End of the World. Prisoner of the Black Hawk. Breath of the Dragon. Beyond the Edge of the Map. And then on the other one, this is the Book of Secrets. And the Book of Answers. The king has promised a prize to the ship's captain who can bring him a map of the whole globe. To do that, they'll need map makers, and farm boy Quinn is shocked to be one of the chosen. Quinn is content with his quiet life, but when the king's advisor discovers the special talent he has tried to keep secret, he has no choice but to join the ragtag crew of slaves and stowaways on the Libertas. On board, Quinn faces the greatest challenge he's ever known, from the strange sea monster hot on their trail to other competitors, who will do anything to win. But the greatest danger may be lying in wait just off the edge of the map. Meantime, it says ragtag group of... I'm all excited about that. <laughs> so these sounds like great adventures. Also, I'm very excited for them. And we have the Witching Hours series by Jack Henselite. 
There is a six book that just came out recently. Uh, it was kind of expensive, so I haven't gotten that yet. Like I said, I stopped buying sequels, mostly, <laughs> for ones I haven't read yet. But there is a six book, but I don't have that one. Book one is called The Vampire Knife. And then when I was searching, I couldn't find book two other for it more than like for less than like forty dollars. So I found a cheap one, a cheap arc on eBay. So I got that for now. I will get a finished copy whenever I read the series. And this one's called The Troll Heart. And the Genie Rings. The Mermaid Wreck. And the Dragon Crown. Keep reading if you dare. Anna and Max love scary stories, but when they find a mysterious knife on a dark and stormy night, truth becomes stranger than fiction. Brought to a spooky inn at the edge of the woods in Transylvania, the siblings find themselves dragged into a world of monsters and magic, and it soon becomes all too clear that vampires are not just a fairy tale. When Max vanishes, it's up to Anna to save him, with the help of a new friend. Will Anna and Max find a way to survive their very own scary story? This deliciously creepy book is a modern Brothers Grimm tale full of adventure and fun nights that will have readers jumping in their seats and ripping through the pages to find out what happens next. Come across a couple of vampire metal grades lately, but there aren't that many, so I'm very excited to see what that's all about. And then we have Heroes Quartet series by Kathy Kaser. Couldn't find a book one that matched the other three. I love the cover of book one, it's just I've tried to get them to match, but I couldn't. But the book, first book is The Sound of Freedom. And then Masters of Silence. Louder Than Words. And Call Across the Sea. Anna and her family have only one hope left to escape certain doom. It's 1936, and the Jews of Krakow know that the hatred and violence directed at them can only end in tragedy. Young Anna begs her father to leave Poland, but how can he give up his position as a celebrated clarinist with the Krakow Philharmonic Orchestra? When Anna hears that the world-renowned violinist Bronislaw Herberman is auditioning Jewish musicians for a new orchestra in Palestine, she makes a bold move to try to save her family. But will it be enough? Based on real events in pre-war Poland and Palestine, The Sound of Freedom reminds all readers about the high price people have paid and continue to pay to escape persecution. I got me all teary uh, World War II, I don't like to say I enjoy reading about it because it's not enjoyable. It's hard to explain. I like reading because even though it's fiction, a lot of it's based on real things, but it is fiction, but it, I always learn something and I think it's important because, like I say, and it's a very used quote, those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. And I think that's true. So, I think the people of World War II, everyone who suffered, especially, mostly, most importantly, the Jewish community at that time. And even now, and even I learned, Bruce, I didn't know, I thought it all started then, but the hatred towards the Jewish community has went on way hundreds of years before that. It's so ridiculous. I don't understand it, but I think it's important and you, it's important not to forget them and what they went through and even still continue to go through. So I always want to read about that time <clears throat> and what they endured. And some of them can be difficult, but I think it's important to even read the difficult ones because imagine living through it if you think it's hard to read about it and you don't want to forget it. The further we get on in history, it'll be easier to say that couldn't have really happened. It's over-exaggerated, but it did, and it's important to not let that happen. Let look, Don't let them be forgotten or downplay what they went through. So, I'm happy to have this. Then we have a series. It looks like they're like companions. I don't know if, but on Goodreads, they're all listed together as just part of the same series. Um, but I don't remember what the name of the series was. And they're by Deborah Wiles. And there's four. I have five here because two of the books are the same, but they have completely different covers and I didn't realize it. But I got them at like half price books. So it doesn't really matter. First book is Love, Ruby Lavender. I had these for a while, but I just recently finally got the last book. And then the ones that have the same, that are the same, Each Little Bird That Sings. This is the first edition I have. This is the next one. And then the Aurora County All-Stars. And a long line of cakes. Okay, it's the an Aurora County series. 
Ruby Lavender and Miss Ula are a pretty good team for a couple of chicken thieves. What other granddaughter-grandmother duo would drive the getaway car for chickens rescued from the slaughterhouse or paint a whole house shell shot pink? But now Miss Ula has up and left for Hawaii to visit her new smelly grandbaby. Poor Ruby. Stuck in boring old Halloween, Halloween Mississippi with nothing to do it. Free to her chickens, sweep floors, torture, and be tormented by the curly-haired, tip-tapping Mama Jane. But nine-year-old Ruby is in for some big surprises. I'm excited these sound like a lot of fun. I don't know what the series is called. It might just be Flora Segunda. I'm not going to even try to say the author. But there it is. I'm not even going to try to say that. This is the first book, Flora Segunda. Flora's Dare. Flora's Fury. And this goes with it somehow. Prophe prophecies, like libels, and dreams. Stories of Khalifa. Flora Fredraca knows taking shortcuts in Crackpot Hall can be risky. After all, when a house has 11,000 decaying rooms that shift about at random, there's no telling where a person might end up. But it's not just household confusion that vexes Flora. What with Mama always being commanding general of the army, Poppy drowning his sorrows in drink, and Crackpot Hall too broken down to magically provide the clean towels and hot waffles that are a Fredraca's birthright. Yet Flora is nothing if not a girl of spirit. So when she takes a forbidden shortcut and stumbles upon her family's biggest secret, Valifor, the banished butler, she and her best friend plunge happily into the grand adventure of restoring Valifor to his rightful, or so he says, position. If only Flora knew that meddling with a magical being can go terribly awry, and that soon she will have to find a way to restore herself before it's too late. He just sounds so incredible and right at my alley, and that synopsis has me so intrigued. And then we have this series, Amanda Lester series, Paula Berenstein. This book is Amanda Lester and the Pink Sugar Conspiracy. Lester and the Orange Crystal Crisis. Amanda Lester and the Purple Rainbow Puzzle. Amanda Lester and the Blue Peacock Secret. Amanda Lester and the Red Spider Rumpus. Amanda Lester and the Cold Spectacle Surprise. Amanda Lester and the Green Monkey Gotcha. Amanda Lester and the Black Shadow Terror. And these last two say Amanda Lester stories. Iva Halpin and the Irish Bog Witches. Nick Muffet and the Silver Coffin. Beautiful covers. A reluctant detective, a criminal mastermind, and sugar? Amanda Lester wouldn't be caught dead going into the family business. Her ancestor, Sherlock Holmes's colleague, Inspector G. Lestrade, is a twit. Nevertheless, her parents refuse to see his flaws, and she's going to a secret English school for the descendants of famous detectives, whether she likes it or not. When Amanda arrives at the dreaded school, she considers running away, until she and her new friends discover blood and weird pink substances in odd places. At first, they're not sure whether these seeming clues mean anything. But when Amanda's father disappears and the cook is found dead with her head in a bag of sugar, they're certain that crimes are taking place. Now Amanda must embrace her destiny and uncover the truth. The only snag is that arch-villain Blixus Morarty, a descendant of Holmes' nemesis Professor James Morarty, might be involved and he doesn't like nosy little girls interfering in his business. So a descendant of Sherlock Holmes and a school, English school for the descendants of famous detect. Like these sound like they were made for me. <laughs> so excited. I'm not sure about what this series is called, but it's by Chris Gravenstein. And the first book is Cross Crossroad, The Crossroads. The Hanging Hill. The Smoky Corridor. And the Black Heart Crypt. And all, and all it says is, meet Zach Jennings. Average kid. He has a hardworking father. A new stepmother. A new house. Even a new dog zipper. Things are looking up for Zach. Except there is this ghost. This really nasty ghost. A ghost who kills people. And Zach is on his list. On the back, have you ever seen a face hidden in the bark of a tree and known that the man trapped inside wanted to hurt you? Color me intrigued. <laughs> Very excited. And we have Beast City Nightmare series by Kate Shepard. And these are all naked hardback. First book is The Shadow Hand. Phantom Hour. The Twilight Curse. 
and the vampire doll. Awesome illustrations. Yeah. Sleep tight, don't let the nightmares bite. For Rebecca Chen, babysitting has always been easy. But one night, a thunderstorm knocks the power out while she's watching baby Kyle, and creepy things begin to happen in the house. The locked window opens by itself, mossy handprints streak the walls, and the baby starts acting strange. When she finds out that no one else in town was affected by the storm, Rebecca wonders if something supernatural is going on. Fellow sisters Tanya, Cleo, and Maggie help Rebecca investigate, only to discover something unbelievable. A sinister ruler of darkness has taken the baby and replaced him with a changeling. Only the girls can save him. If they survive, a chilling journey into the nightmare, nightmare room. That <laughs> sounds incredible. Very excited. We have the Far World series by J. Scott Savage. The first book is Water Keep, Land Keep, Air Keep, and My Element, Fire Keep. Other people may see 13 year old Marcus Caninas as an outcast and a nobody, but he sees himself as a survivor and a dreamer. In fact, his favorite dream is of a world far away, a world where magic is as common as air, where animals tell jokes, and where trees beg people to pick their fruit. He even has a name for this place, Far World. When Marcus magically travels to Far World, he meets Kaija, a girl without magic in a world where spells, charms, and potions are everywhere, and Master Therapos, a master wizard who has kept a secret hidden for 13 years, a secret that could change the fate of two worlds. But the Dark Circle has learned of Master Therapos' secret and their evil influence and power are growing. Farward's only hope is for Marcus and Kaija to find the mythical elementals, water, land, air, and fire, and convince them to open a drift between the worlds. As Kaija and Marcus travel to Waterkeep, they must face the worst the evil, dark the evil dark circle can throw at them. Summoners who can command the living and the dead, unmakers, invisible creatures that can destroy both body and soul, and dark ma mages known as the Zarathkin Sabe. Along the way, Marcus and Kaija will discover the truth about their own heritage, the strength of their friendship, and the depths of their unique powers. Very exciting. Yeah, we have the Maisie Hitchens series by Holly Webb. First book is The Case of the Stolen Sixpence, Case of the Vanishing Emerald, the Case of the Phantom Cat, the Case of the Feathered Mask, the Case of the Secret Tunnel, the Case of the Spilled Ink, the Case of the Blind Beetle, and the Case of the Weeping Mermaid. Maisie Hitchin longs to be a detective. She's sure there are lots of mysteries to solve on the streets of Victorian London, if only she weren't so busy running errands for her grandmother. When Maisie rescues an abandoned puppy, he quickly leads her to her first case. George, the butcher's boy, has been sacked for stealing, but Maisie's sure he's innocent. It's time for Maisie to put her de detective skills to the test as she follows the trail of the missing money. Victorian London, detective, mystery, metal green, illustrated. Sound made for me too. Very excited. We have the Sammy Key series. This is a much longer series. These are just the books I have. I know this is book one and two, three, four, I think. But then after that, I'm not sure what numbers these are. So, but it's a much longer series. And uh, they're by Wandelin Van Dran Dranen. First book is The Hotel Thief. Sammy Keys and the Skeleton Man. Sammy Keys and the Sisters of Mercy. Sammy Keys and the Runaway Elf. Sammy Keys and the Curse of Mustache Mary. And Sammy Keys and the Hollywood Mummy. Sammy Keys must be a magnet for trouble. It's bad enough that Sammy has to live illegally in a seniors only building with her grandmother while her mother tries to make it as a movie star. And worse, that she's wit she witnessed a burglary in progress and that the thief saw her. And worse still, that nosy neighbor Mrs. Grey Bill is onto her and the thief is after her. But on top of all that, she also manages to make an enemy of the Queen of Mean at her new school and gets suspended on the first day. Welcome to the wild world of Sammy Keys. They sound incredible and fun. Very excited. St. Grizzle's School for Girls by Karen McCombie. First book is Goats and Random Boys. Ghosts and Runaway Grannies. Geeks and Tagalong Zombies. And Gremlins and Pesky Yes. Illustrated as well. My mom, my mom loves penguins, bums more than me. Otherwise, she never dumped me in some stuffy old school while she heads off to the Antarctic. And it gets worse. When we arrive at St. Griselda's School for Girls, the schools had a drastic makeover. Gone are the uniforms, the rules, and or most of the pupils and staff. In their place is total chaos. We're greeted by a bunch of stampeding eight-year-olds, a head-butting goat, and a crazy head teacher wearing a plastic spoon crown. Somebody get me out of here. 
These sound like so much fun and I'm very intrigued by that synopsis. We have the City of Ember series. I posted the first, either just the first book or a couple of the books before, but I finally have all of them by Jean or Jeanne Dupra. I love the editions with these covers. The book is The People of Sparks. Prophet of Yonwood, Diamond of Darkhold, and the graphic novel, The City of Ember. And it's adapted by Dallas Madal. Ember is the only light in a dark world, but now its lamps are beginning to flicker. The City of Ember was built as a last refuge for the human race. 200 years later, supplies are running low and terrifying blackouts are sweeping through the streets. It's only a matter of time before the lights go out and never come back on again. When Lena finds part of a secret message, she's sure it holds a clue that will save Ember. She enlists her friend, Dune, and together they explore long-forgotten parts of their dying city as they race to solve the mystery. If they succeed, they will have to convince everyone to follow them into danger. But if they fail, the lights will burn out and the darkness will close in forever. So excited for these. I've always heard incredible things, and they just sound so good. And we have the Story Thieves series by James Riley. I'm just going through the story thief. Stolen chapters. Secret origins. Pick the plot. And worlds apart. Life is boring when you live in the real world instead of starring in your own book series. Owen knows that better than anyone, what with the real world's homework and chores. But everything changes the day Owen sees the impossible happen. His classmate Bethany climbing out of a book in the library. It turns out Bethany's half-fictional and has been searching every book she can find for her missing father, a fictional character. Bethany can't let anyone else learn her secret, so Owen makes her a deal. All she has to do is take him into a book in no one's favorite Kill Noman Foot series, and he'll never say a word. Besides, visiting the book might help Bethany find her father. Or it might just destroy the Kill Gomen Foot series, <laughs> reveal Bethany's secret to the entire world, and force Owen to live out Kill Gomen Foot's final and very final, very final adventure. That sounds incredible. Going inside books. Love it. And lastly for this video, we have the Scarlet and Ivy series by Sophie Cleverly. Which book is The Lost Twin. The Whisper in the Walls. The Dance in the Dark. The Lights Under the Lake. The Curse in the Candlelight. And The Last Secret. A creepy boarding school, a sudden disappearance, a secret diary waiting to be found. This is the story of how I became my sister. When troublemaker Scarlet goes missing from Rookwood School, her twin sister Ivy is invited to take her place in more ways than one. It's not long before Ivy discovers that secrets are rife and the truth has been concealed. Ivy is determined to solve the mystery of her sister's disappearance, even if that means going up against a terrifying Miss Fox. Even if that means pretending to be Scarlet for as long as it takes. That's just so, it sounds so interesting and... I'm very excited for these. All right, y'all, so that's all for part four of this video series. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed it. Have y'all heard of any of these? Do you want to read them? Have you read any of them? Let me know in the comments. Pretty sure it is Casper. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that if you want to. And I will see you on my next video. Bye.